What's up, everybody? Welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thank you all for tuning in and stopping by. It's great to have everybody here. For everyone who's brand new, hi and welcome. My name is Nick. I'm a drummer, a multi-instrumentalist, amongst other things. And the reason why we do videos like these is so that way we can take a look at the drummer's techniques who are better than us, break them down to a nice and easy to digest form, so that way we can make ourselves better musicians and ultimately improve. And we got a pretty cool drummer we're taking a look at today. So we've reviewed him once before. Dude's an absolute beast of a drummer, and I've said nothing but good things about the fella. He's Definitely one of my greatest inspirations as far as drums is concerned. Today we're talking about Maria Duplantier of Gojira. Now, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of where Gojira is headed now. They're kind of going for more of that like rock sound. I was much more of a fan of The Way of All Flesh and that album cycle from Mars Osiris and you know the albums like that. And that's just kind of where my interest lies the most with Gojira because that had the most aggressive sound, that had the most interesting sound. It was something that was heavily inspirational to me, especially starting out my drumming journey. I didn't exactly know what kind of style I wanted to form it coming you know, mostly from a thrash metal background. And one of those songs that really is absolutely insane and something I could never really wrap my head around until a lot later on when I was a little more experienced with the music theory and with music in general and just overall playing drums is The Art of Dying. That's a riff that starts out with a really interesting time signature alternation. It's, it's like, it starts out with three measures in 5-8 and then three measures in 3-8 and then three measures in 5-8, two measures in 3-8. It's, it's super complicated stuff. And then the whole time underneath the they just have a pulsing you know 4-4 four, four beat going on there and that's something that I think is you know a really interesting way to you know stylize it especially since it takes like 40 something measures for everything to line up again but the whole intro to the song is just a massive polyrhythm and it's something that's super complicated requires a lot of technicality to be able to play and a lot of experience you have to really practice that song before you can really sit down and play it very efficiently and very well and fellas we're gonna take a look at the master do his work today. Apparently this was released a day ago at the time of filming this of Mario Duplantier playing The Art of Dying for the first time in a while. It's it, This is going to be definitely very interesting to see because this is one of my favorite songs on the album. It sounds absolutely sonically amazing and this dude's just such an absolutely beast, you know, beastly drummer. So I'd love to see what kind of stuff this guy has to do. So without any further ado guys, let's get into it. Let's take a look and see what Mario Duplantier has to show us today. Before we start though, I check my YouTube analytics as any good creator should and and only about 0.7% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel. What are you guys doing with your lives? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. We do a lot of fun stuff and a lot of videos just like this on here. We're going to have a lot more fun content coming your way, so stick around. It's going to be a fun, fun journey. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll get started. Without further ado, guys, let's jump in and take a look at what Mario Duplantier is going to show us. So the, for those of you who don't know, this might sound like an absolutely chaotic intro, but what's going on is that same intro pattern, by the way, that this song starts out with, which is the three bars of 5-8 and then the three bars of 3-8, the three bars of 5-8 and then the two bars of 3-8 that whole thing he's playing that split up between his bass drum and his snare he's going he's doing that while keeping a pulsing just classic you know 4/4 four, four rhythm going on on the high on not the high on the ride cymbal so it's definitely something that's a very crazy unique polyrhythm and we'll just zoom back a little bit and we'll start over from there i just wanted to give that real quick little explanation in case there's some drummers who are like holy crap what's he even playing Look at his head when he's moving. He's he's counting along to it. Ooh. Just look at the amount of power that he's putting into it too. Like this is he's just letting the energy go.
and we go from an absolutely insane polyrhythm beat to just a simple, one of the simplest beats known to man. But just look at the power that he's putting into it and the conviction that he plays with. Hmm. This is crazy because I've never seen this man actually like play the song live. I've only watched covers of this song, so watching him actually just play this right here is something that's it's eye-opening for me. Hmm. And those rim shots sound so perfect too. And then we're coming back to that really, really crazy rhythm. And he's also doing ghost notes on top of that, on the snare. I mean, dude is a legend for a reason. And he's doing stick tricks! He's doing stick tricks on top of it! He's definitely a legend. And he's vibing out. He's having fun with what he's playing. Hmm. Now here's the thing. There's another second half to the song that he did not play, which is really sad. I was really hoping we'd get to that, but phenomenal job on his part. Phenomenal, phenomenal job on his part. That is definitely one of the hardest songs to play on drums just because of how complicated of a polyrhythm it is. Just like that's just it's all really complicated stuff. So let's go into the review. Let's take a look and see what kind of stuff we can learn from Mario Duplantier today. Well, first off, ladies and gentlemen, let's just break down this man's absolutely amazing technique. Freaking powerful. Using a lot of wrist motion, using a lot of, you know, just regular old full leg motion. He wasn't doing anything too crazy you know, speed-wise other than that, a lot of it's really complicated polyrhythms. Now, here's the thing. Polyrhythms can be a little bit hard for some people to wrap their heads around because sometimes it can be a little bit complicated to think, well, how the heck am I supposed to play this? I'm not used to playing, you know, like two different bars that are in different time signatures at the same time. It might seem a little bit, you know, crazy, especially for beginning drummers and whatnot. One way that you can learn to really kind of grasp polyrhythms is, and I've seen this happen online before a lot, anagrams. Now, what is an anagram? That's when you take a phrase, right? I believe that I believe this is an anagram anyway. It's when you take a phrase, right? And you chop it up so that way the timing of it kind of matches what you're trying to say. So like, say for example, if I'm trying to do a three versus five, five rhythm, I'd like to sing, but I can't. I'd like to sing, but I can't. I like to sing, but I can't. Kind of something like that. And you see how I'm kind of patting on my chest as well to show you guys, you know, kind of what I'm saying. Using anagrams like that where you take a sentence and you chop it up so that way the timing of it matches the rhythm. I like to sing, but I can't. I like to sing, but I can't. Gives you a little bit more of a deep perspective, a much more, you know, easier to grasp perspective of something like that where it's a polyrhythm, where you're having your hands do two different rhythms at the same time and it balances out and everything works out fine. Something like that is actually a very handy way to be able to learn different polyrhythms. And there's a lot of different anagrams that are out there. And one place that you can go to is the drummer's almanac for that. I'll link his channel up in the top part right up here because he's got all sorts of really really cool helpful guides on how to help you learn polyrhythms, help you absorb polyrhythms, and actually understand them up here. The dude is an absolute beast of a drummer. Go check out his channel. It takes a lot of time and practice to be able to play these polyrhythms. So just remember, you're not going to be able to become Danny Carey overnight. You're not going to be able to become Neil Peart or Mike Portnoy or anybody like that overnight where you're doing some insane crazy polyrhythms. You'll be able to start adding a whole bunch of these new polyrhythms in your own playing as well. And not just between your two hands, but between your feet and your hands as well. And even 
each foot and each hand as well. It all is going to take a lot of time to learn and master and really, you know, build it into your muscle memory, build it into your head or anything like that. So just be patient. Take your time to learn it. Learn some cool anagrams to help you kind of grasp those concepts so that way you can move on later on in life and use that to your advantage, especially when you're trying to create some more complicated material. And with all that being said, y'all, that's going to be the end of this playthrough review. So thank you all for tuning in and stopping by. It's been great having everybody here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below of Mario's playthrough. And with all that being said, y'all, I will see y'all in the next video. So cheers, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening.